Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in this tutorial let's talk about the takeoff and the initial climb procedures in the Airbus A320. So we're going to start with the very lineup. Once you line up the pilot flying is going to switch the strobe light on. The reason the strobe light needs to be taken out of auto and into the on position is because by law the strobes need to be on as soon as we line up on the runway and the auto position only serves as a backup to turn the strobes on when the plane gets airborne. So the strobe lights need to be switched on. The landing lights and the nose light are only going to be switched to the on or takeoff position respectively when takeoff clearance is actually received by air traffic control. Two, six. Right. In the background runway, there, you hear two, the uh, runway six, awareness right. system, uh, third party add-on by FS2 crew. So this is a third party, you might not find that in any Airbus, but most aircraft in the real world have it fitted nowadays. For that reason, I'm running it in my simulator as well. Now, while we're going over the explanation, it will become a little bit annoying. So I am just about going to turn that off now because, runway, well, it, two, as I mentioned, six, might right. get a little on bit runway, annoying. Two, six, right. Okay, so, with all of that now done, let's go ahead and talk about the actual takeoff procedure. It is standard procedure in Airbus aircraft that you take off with the packs turned off. So, this is something we need to be aware of for, um, the initial climb phase where we need to turn them back on. It is also on something to be aware two, of. Six, yeah, thank you, right. FS2 crew. On um, two, looks like I can't six, really even shut that right. down. Okay, so be it. We'll have to live with this. So, the packs off obviously mean that it is going to get hot in the cabin rather quickly. But we really want to turn them off for takeoffs as much as possible as it does save quite a bit of fuel. So, there need to be 20 seconds between turning the packs off and setting takeoff thrust. So adjust the time when you're turning them off as needed, runway, especially if two, you do expect six, a lengthy right. departure On delay. Runway, but two, six, turn right. them off early enough that you have those 20 seconds. Apart from that, let's now talk about the actual takeoff itself. So the procedure is that the pilot flying is going to announce takeoff and then set the thrust levers to 50%. You can easily tell where a thrust lever is set by looking at these blue donuts over here. Just set it to, to the 5, the engines run up to 50%, stabilize over there and then go into the flax or the toga notch on as runway. needed. Two, six, now, right. on runway. Two, if you six, run an aircraft right. using EPR engines, or EPR driven engines, namely the um, IAE V2500, you would set 1.05 EPR and stabilize them over there. If you've got a crosswind at or below 20 knots and there is no tailwind, you would move the side stick half forward, so something like this, half forward, and if there is a tailwind or crosswind more than 20 knots, you would go full forward on the on side stick way. in order to Two, improve six, the nose right. wheel on steering runway. effectiveness Two, and counter some six, of the nose up right. movement induced by the engines running up. Now, when the engines are stabilized, you set them into the flex or toga notch as applicable, verify that thrust is going to increase rapidly to about 70% and then progressively to reach takeoff thrust by 40 knots ground speed. So start the uh, chronometer so that you can time for how long the two, um, engines are six, running in takeoff thrust right. which becomes On important runway. in case of an two, engine failure. Six, Check right. that takeoff thrust is set and call thrust set. At 80 knots you slowly remove the side stick to reach neutral by 100 knots. At 100 knots, you cross check the speed indications on all three speed indicators. At V1, you take your hands off the thrust levers. VR, start a rotation at approximately 3 degrees per second towards an initial pitch attitude of 15 degrees. If on an runway, engine failure happens, two, we're looking at six, an initial pitch right, of 12.5 degrees. Runway. Two, Minimize the six, lateral inputs on the right. ground and during rotation to avoid spoiler extension. And do note that even with strong crosswinds, the A320 does usually not need any aileron into the wind. So even with a strong crosswind, this is normally not needed. When you observe a positive climb on the vertical speed indicator, the altimeter and the radio altimeter, 
Then you are going to retract the landing gear. And above on 100 runway. feet Two. AGL, Six. the autopilot may Nine. already be engaged. For the purpose of Two. this tutorial, Six. we are going to Nine. engage the autopilot that early. But be aware that you can engage it later. It only needs to come on before you enter RVSM airspace. So typically around flight level 245 is the limit to engage the autopilot latest. Everything else I'm going to explain as it happens. So now that we talked about everything, let's go ahead and conduct our takeoff. So takeoff clearance is now received. With that, we turn the landing lights on, on and runway. the nose light Two. into the takeoff Six. position. Right. On Release the parking brake right. and announce takeoff. With that, we are also going to turn on the elapsed timer over here and the chronometer. So take off, thrust levers to 50% and stabilize. Side stick forward and setting the thrust. Call out the FMA, Manflex 50, SRS, Romway, A thrust blue, thrust set. So we are passing 80, I'm going to side stick neutral, 100 knots, cross checked. V1, rotate. Nice and smooth rotation to 15 degrees. Positive climb. Gear up. Nav. Checked. Okay, and autopilot one. So let's have the autopilot fly the plane so that we can focus on what's happening next. The next thing is going to be at the thrust reduction and acceleration altitude, 2500 feet here. We get the climb FMA and we get the lever climb flashing. Now, this tells us to reduce the thrust levers to climb thrust. But before we do that, we wait for the automatics to lower the nose and to get a positive acceleration. And only then we set climb thrust down here. Announce thrust climb, climb, auto thrust. When the speed goes above the S speed, that is when we can initiate flap retraction. And as soon as we have climb thrust, we're also going to turn the first pack on. So we're going through the S-speed and we know that our 220 knots here is above the um, green dot speed, so above the speed that we can fly with the flaps retracted, so flap zero. When you select flap zero, you also disarm the spoilers and turn off the nose light and the runway turn off light. With at least 10 seconds between the two packs, we are also going to turn pack two on. And that basically is the entire procedure already done. So let's go ahead and select a higher altitude. Something like uh, our cruise level, flight level 380. And when passing the transition altitude, which is indicated by the altimeter starting to flash down here, we go set standard. You check all three, indicating standard. Standard cross check passing flight level 55 now. There is no after takeoff checklist because anything that could potentially go wrong at this point would be indicated to you by the plane, like a pack not being on, the altimeter would flash if it's not set to standard, the um, overspeed warning would be much lower than usual if the landing gear was still down. So that concludes the procedure. There is one last scan flow that you do once everything is done, and that is go down here again, flaps, spoilers, engine start selector where needed, landing gear up, packs on. And when that flow is complete, then you're done. All right, and that is it already. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope that you learned something today. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I see you all again on the next one. And with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. And as always, if you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe and be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Until then, see you.